index returns have been quite flat over the past six months and we guessed that would be the case and we talked about the old normal and not really seen a lot of volatility in either rates or credit. So when it comes down to our performance relative to that index, we've been doing, we've been positioning quite well, I think, in terms of geography and interest rate curve, both in terms of rates and credit, generally focusing on shorter dated bonds, which have done better than longer dated ones. Uh, and in the rate side, uh, moving our, our duration around a little bit as yields moved across that quite narrow range. So a number of opportunities uh, to, to make money and um, very much dependent on the value that we've seen in the bond market. Yeah, absolutely. And on the credit side, credit spreads have traded in an extremely narrow trading range. So actually, it wasn't a direction bet, but the actual particular stock selections really helped. So it was more what we didn't own as well. So we didn't have the Alantis or the Thames Water of these worlds, but we did have names like Utelsat that actually went up quite a lot because the market always, even in a very dull trading range, can misprice particular stocks. And so we did make some money on Utelsat and other names like that. I mean, I would say that's true in rates as well. We, we had a strategy that suggested we should avoid European sovereigns yeah. other than Germany. And we, the, the real reason for that is we didn't see a huge amount of value. Everybody else seemed to own that asset class and uh, distorted the market a little bit. So no real risk premium ahead of European elections. So entering that phase with no France, Spain or Italian sovereign risk uh, clearly helped. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when we saw the market um, become a little bit dislocated, uh, as, as you know, we bought some French government bonds, made some money and it moved on. So yeah. Well, and I suppose the classic example for us is no Japan. So G7 uh, economic cycles are a little bit out of sync at the moment. Um, and everyone's now expecting Japan to raise rates. So not owning Japanese bonds uh, at a time when yields have risen there has been pretty good for our index relative performance. Yeah. I would say in rates, the next six months are likely to be more of the same. We're now happier that central banks and market pricing, so maybe one or two rate cuts in the EU, in the US and the UK, uh, market and central banks are more in sync. Uh, and that certainly, uh, we think, is a, is a better place to be. We do think yields are likely to fall a little bit, and we're thinking that we'll likely see a uh, range in US treasuries closer to maybe 4.1 to 4.3, whereas over the last six months, the range has really been 4.3 to 4.6%. And if that's the case, you know, there is the opportunity for a small amount of capital gain. And then, of course, the closer we get to the presidential election in November, the greater the degree of, well, I, I guess, short-term volatility we could see. Uh, but clearly, from our perspective, um, we would look upon that as an opportunity to add value again, uh, similar uh, to what we've done in the past six months. I would look to exploit opportunity if we do see the market rally too much or, or sell too much relative to our, our opinion. Yeah, and it's very similar again on the credit side, um, as we wrote in our six monthly piece, Deja Vu, all over again. It should, we do think that the credit trading rate was probably going to be fairly small, and that we should invest on the credit side for carrying, which really is not chasing risk. Um, the market is pricing basically credit perfection, um, which is understandable on the fundamental side, purely because companies have maintained or increased profitability to kind of outweigh the increase in interest rates that um, injured, but um, it's not really worth us chasing down into an investment grade for us really is the best place to be. Having said that, there's always those opportunities, there's always those higher companies where the market's mispriced risk, but we do think those idiosyncratic risks that have happened in the first six months will continue into the second uh, six months this year in high yield, and we don't really want to be going down further into the single beat triple C's of this, not the right entity triple C, of course, but into the single beats of this one. And I, and I guess, like, just as on the right side, there would be geographic bias, uh, clearly on the, the credit side, you've been quite, you've been correct, uh, and also quite adamant uh, about maintaining an overweight position in Europe relative yeah, exactly. to the geography. Yeah, exactly. When we look every time, we look for uh, opportunities in the US market, we're just hit with that, and it's really quite expensive. Um, so Europe really for us is the better hunting ground really for credit.